Hello ladies, gentlemen, and persons in between. My name is Tim Snowborn, and guess what time it is? That's right! It's Mueller time on another episode of Serious Issues. So, what is going on with the Mueller investigation? I'm glad you asked. I guess we'll start with uh, former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort and his business associate Rick Gates, who have both been indicted for uh, conspiracy against the United States and laundering money for a pro-Russian Ukrainian political party. Manafort and Gates were the first of over 30 indictments the Mueller investigation has issued, most of which are sealed for now, but we'll be finding out who's going to be watching their backs in the prison showers soon enough. Next we have Trump Jr., a.k.a. Fredo Trump. It turns out that Fredo has had a bromance going on with WikiLeaks behind our backs all this time. Since at least September of 2016, WikiLeaks has been direct messaging back and forth with Trump Jr. over Twitter. Among other things, Julian Assange wanted then-candidate Trump to investigate the rumor that Clinton had ordered a drone strike on him. He also wanted Trump Jr. to ask Trump Sr. to promote a website which contained the 33,000 emails that Russia had stolen from John Podesta, which Trump did. Trump did promote that website only 15 minutes after WikiLeaks messaged Trump Jr. asking him to do it. Then there's Jared Kushner, who failed to produce documents related to a backdoor Russian overture. Do not look up backdoor Russian overture on Urban Dictionary. I know how it sounds, but it's actually not a slang term for butt-chugging a bottle of vodka. Kushner also failed to produce documents related to its September 2016 email that he was sent about WikiLeaks and communications with a Russian-born businessman that had been forwarded to him. Then there's former Trump foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos who offered to set up a meeting between then-candidate Trump and President Putin. He has already pled guilty to making false statements to the FBI about his contacts with Russian officials. According to court documents, George Papadopoulos is considered a proactive cooperator in the Mueller investigation, which means he may have worn a wire at some point to record conversations with Trump and or his aides. He says that he told then-Senator, now Attorney General Jeff Sessions, that he wanted to set up this meeting and Sessions said no. Then there's Carter Page, a former oil industry consultant and advisor to the Trump campaign. He says he may have talked about Russia with Papadopoulos. He is a cooperating witness in the Mueller investigation, and he says that he told Sessions that he was going to Moscow to speak with Russian officials and told the Trump campaign the results of that meeting. There's a new book coming out by British journalist Luke Harding of The Guardian called Collusion, Secret Meetings, Dirty Money, and How Russia Helped Trump Win. The book is largely about former British intelligence agent Christopher Steele and the now famous Steele dossier, which is a collection of dirt that Russia has on Trump and how they control him. Steele was a private contractor working with an opposition research firm called Fusion GPS. Fusion GPS was hired by Republican megadonor Paul Singer, who asked them to do background checks on Trump and a number of other Republican candidates during the 2016 election. Around the time Trump clinched the GOP nomination, Singer ended his contract with Fusion GPS and told him to drop it. Whereupon Fusion GPS offered the intel that they'd gathered thus far to the Clinton campaign, who promptly hired them to finish the job. That intel became the basis for the Steele dossier, which is why Trump supporters think that the Steele dossier is part of a smear campaign by Hillary Clinton. Some Trump supporters are out there going, hey, why is it okay for a former British intelligence agent to help the Clinton campaign but it's not okay for the Russians to help the Trump campaign. Well, A, England is not a hostile foreign power, they're an ally. And B, Steele was not working for the British government. At that time, and still today, he was a private contractor. Back to Carter Page and George Papadopoulos now. Both of these men told Jeff Sessions about their contacts with Russian officials, and Jeff Sessions testified under oath that neither he nor anyone in the Trump campaign had had any contact with Russian officials. Which means Sessions lied. He perjured himself. But I suppose that ship sailed during his confirmation hearing. We know he lied during his confirmation hearing, but the Republican-controlled Senate confirmed him anyway. Despite Sessions' history of suspected perjury, there are some fresh questions now about whether or not Trump could actually fire Sessions now that we know he almost certainly lied under oath. Some liberals are even calling for Sessions to be removed. Slow down, guys. Let's go back for a moment to the question of whether or not Trump can fire Mueller. I told you last time that uh, Trump himself cannot fire Mueller. 
That goes back to the Bill Clinton, Ken Starr days. Bill Clinton could not fire Ken Starr because that's the way the rules are set up. Of course he can't. Of course the president can't fire a special prosecutor investigating him. The thing is, Sessions can't fire Mueller either because Sessions recused himself from any involvement in the Russia investigation early on. Right now, Deputy Attorney General Rod Goldstein is the only one who can fire Mueller. But the fact that Sessions almost certainly lied under oath means that Trump can fire Sessions for that reason and appoint someone who hasn't recused himself from the Russia investigation. Someone who can fire Mueller. So, all you liberals out there who are crying for Sessions to be removed, slow your roll. We kinda actually need Sessions there. Another reason that Sessions can't fire Mueller is because Sessions is probably one of those 30 indictments that Mueller has sealed right now. Sessions is probably under indictment at least for lying about his contacts with Russia. We also know that Sessions failed to disclose a meeting with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislak in April of 2016 at the Mayflower Hotel in DC, so yeah. Sessions is probably one of the people under indictment, which is why he can't fire Mueller. Because that would be obstruction of justice. Any of the journalists and law professors that I've been following as they report on the case suspect that the Mueller investigation is a lot further along than they let on. A lot of liberals, including myself, are wishing that the Mueller investigation would hurry up and nail him. But as I said last time, Mueller has to be careful. He has to do this right or he's going to blow it. Right now, Mueller is carefully building the best possible case he can. He wants Trump dead to rights before Trump knows what hit him. He's playing everything real close to the chest because he knows as soon as he drops the hammer, Trump is going to do something crazy and stupid, like try to fire him or possibly start a nuclear war. Yes, that issue has actually been discussed. People in the White House, including General Kelly, have discussed what to do if Trump lunges for the nuclear football. That's the America we live in now, where we have to be afraid of the president lunging for the nuclear football to start a war to distract everyone from his involvement with a hostile foreign power. Again, Mueller is building an airtight case and playing everything close to the chest so that when he finally drops the hammer, it'll hit Trump like a ton of bricks. God, did I just use four metaphors in one sentence? Trump will have no choice but to resign or be impeached or both. He is going to rot in prison, so just wait for it. By the time I talk to you about the investigation again next month, Mueller will have interviewed two people. One is Rob Goldstone, the British publicist who set up the meeting between Trump Jr. and the Kremlin-connected lawyer at Trump Tower in June of 2016. The other will be Hope Hicks, a former model, now Trump communications director. The suspicion is that when the Russians wanted to email Trump, they would email Hicks instead, and she would just let Trump read the email, and that's how he maintained plausible deniability. By the way, there is a 100% chance that Trump has at least made a pass at Hicks. She's beautiful, and she's been working for the Trump family since 2012. He has definitely at least made a pass at her. He probably hasn't sexually assaulted her, or she wouldn't be so anxious to maintain relationships with the Trump family, but he has definitely made a pass at her. In fact, since Trump has already bankrupted the Secret Service, I can't believe he hasn't replaced them with a team of sexy female ninjas and a fluffy white attack cat. We all know he loves to grab a pussy. Don't we, Gypsy? Mm. So tell me what you think, guys. Do you think Trump's screwed? Do you think he has an ace up his sleeve? Do you think the Mueller investigation will nail him soon? Do you think he'll get away with his shenanigans? Thank you very much for joining me for this conversation. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. I look forward to reading your thoughts in the kitties below. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. I would love to have you subscribe and join me for future conversations and check out my other videos for more. If you are an existing subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Don't forget to call your congressman and ask them to protect the Mueller investigation and say no to the Republicans' appalling tax plan and support expanded background checks and protect the Alaskan Wildlife Refuge. Thanks again for joining me, everyone. We'll see you next time.